DC, not too shabby, not too shabby. You finally found your footing last year with movies like Shazam and Joker, both surprisingly great movies, with the latter being the best one in the lot. And now look at you guys! Shazam is getting a sequel released in 2021, Joker is getting a whole lot of awards consideration, and also, Joker submits itself as the highest grossing R-rated superhero movie, or R-rated movie, of all time, as we speak today. But to be blunt and perfectly honest with you guys, the only reason why DC has finally found its footing after so many years is because the two words, Zack Snyder, are no longer in the credits whatsoever. Which in my eyes, and almost in everyone's eyes, made the world and the film industry a much better place. But for this review in particular, it's about that time we celebrate the most wonderful time of the year. As it's time to critique the next DC movie that is next in line for my own journalistic judgment. As we review the next movie in the DC Cinematic Universe that is none other than the one, the only, Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Now, to be perfectly honest, I was dreading this movie completely, and it wasn't because of the fact that it's a DC Cinematic Universe movie, although that certainly could be the case. From the forced feminism and males being misogynistic marketing, to the massive reshoots, some of which have been done by Chad Stahelski of the John Wick franchise to do most of the action sequences, although he is practically uncredited in this movie. But just because this movie is under the deluge of insipid marketing and production errors and reshoots doesn't mean it doesn't have the capability of pulling off an entertaining film. Every single movie deserves its day in court, no matter its political or lack thereof convictions or obligation. So, now that I have finally left the cinema, I come before you to opine the following descriptor about this film by uttering a Morton Joe's favorite word. It's mediocre. Even if I watched this movie as a movie and not just a forced feminism platform, I still would have the utterance to say that Birds of Prey is a lifeless, vapid film that manipulates the audience into thinking that it's fun and chaotic, when in reality it's all the more banal and joyless, even if there are some people out there who actually found enjoyment in this film. But anyway, off to the plot. What really lies within Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn is that Margot Robbie has finally returned into the role yet again as Harley Quinn, who has recently broken up with the Joker. And yes, we're talking about the bad one. And since the Joker is out of Harley's mind for good, everybody who had a grudge on her is about to get revenge on her and kill her once and for all, now that she is vulnerable without the Joker's company and his arsenal of criminals. One of whom is Black Mask, portrayed by the one and only Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, Ewan McGregor, as he's trying to obtain a diamond that has confidential codes that lead to a specific vault that has been stolen by Cassandra Cain and has given Harley Quinn one day to find the diamond and to rescue the girl, otherwise they are both terminated. Now, I would like to start off this review very positively, as I have done for most DC Cinematic Universe films. Since Suicide Squad, everyone has raved about Margot Robbie's performance as Harley Quinn, acknowledging that it's one of the bright spots of that loathsome turn of a film. But in Birds of Prey, Margot Robbie does absolutely deliver and unleash the potential of what could have made Margot Robbie a fun-loving and enjoyable character in Suicide Squad to some degree. At other points, she really doesn't deliver on the laughs as much. At other points, she's kind of annoying to tolerate. But regardless of the circumstances, she still manages to handle the performance with ease. And speaking of handling performances with ease, it went McGregor as Roman Sionis, AKA Black Mass. He is incredibly energetic. He fits the character perfectly. His line delivery is efficient. And you can absolutely tell by his performance that he is having a whale of a time portraying as this character. But how he's written as a character on the other hand, We'll get to him later. And while Chad Stahelski was remained uncredited in this movie for his reshoots on the action sequences, the action sequences that they are portrayed on screen are pretty neat. Even if this movie has a severe case of slow-mo speed up, slow-mo syndrome as you would usually see in Wonder Woman or a Zack Snyder movie. But all of these scenes can also be ruined in which you get scripted sequences of a henchman lining up in a single file line ready to attack Harley Quinn as soon as most of them are shadow boxing in the background and the protagonist brutalize the opponents one by one. Even in a scene where Harley Quinn is using a beanbag grenade launcher and she's entering a police station with multiple cops who do have their guns in their holsters, I was just like, try using your guns! You have weapons! Harley Quinn has a beanbag gun! You have actual weaponry! She doesn't! Use your guns! Do not line up in a single file line so that way she can easily defeat you! But I guess in order for the characters to establish how amazing their plot armor is, the enemies have to go in one at a time, you know, without interacting with each other, of course, because, you know, who cares about stakes in an action sequence, without using their weapons to take on Harley Quinn. Even in certain instances where you have 
gang men and henchmen who use guns in the most inappropriate time. And you know what? Sometimes in this movie, in terms of the action sequences, Harley Quinn will get away not by sure expertise or fighting abilities, but by pure dang luck. Don't believe me? It's an actual piece of dialogue in the film to insinuate what the rest of the movie is gonna feel like. If you don't feel a sense of urgency or peril for our protagonist during the action sequences, then why the heck should you care? I know, I know. I saved my grievances for later. Let's continue on with the positives. And speaking of positives, if there is one reason to go see this movie, is that it does away with the problems of Suicide Squad. And I can start off by saying the greatest one of them all, Jared Leto's Joker is not coming. You no longer have to deal with him anymore. He does get like a few name drops, but other than that, no appearances. But I do have to give my sincere condolences to the guy, so don't worry, Jared Leto's Joker. You will be missed by Suicide Squad fans. And also the introductions of the characters are far more creative this time around. There is an opening section that tells Harley Quinn's life story in 2D animation. It's all colorfully animated and uniquely told. And the biographies of the characters who kind of have a grudge against Harley Quinn are also told in the same style as Suicide Squad, but are less overblown and disastrous. And also, surprisingly enough, the editing is less annoying and frantic. There are no instances of jumble, janky, and hyperactive editing that makes you feel nauseous or tired, especially during the action scenes in this movie, where everything is filmed within a steady shops and pan arounds, and you can see exactly what the characters are doing, and nothing felt as choppy or disorienting as most of the action scenes, including the climax of Suicide Squad. And also, to some extent, Birds of Prey has some quality work cinematography. There are some incredibly unique shots in this movie that look absolutely marvelous and well presentable to the eye, including in my eyes, which is one of the best shots in the movie, or perhaps the best shot in the movie, in which Harley Quinn is walking away from the ace chemical plant as it explodes and erupts into flames. It's very colorful and visually presentable, and is used in, in a very artistic format. But now that all the fun and games are over, let's get to the flaws. For starters, let's talk about the story. The entire plot, without having to use flashbacks on certain characters, is linear and narratively thin. And it's such an unbelievable shame, because the entire premise, revolving around the first 20 minutes, is actually pretty interesting. Everyone is out to get Harley Quinn, and there is nobody else who wants to back her up. That premise alone would have made somewhat of an interesting idea. But the movie as a whole, simply for existing, has to owe itself to one film in particular being Deadpool, because Birds of Prey has the same kind of humor, same fourth wall breaking narration, and storytelling, except it doesn't do it as unique as Deadpool, where it was sharp, witty, clever, hilarious, as well as having the story beats and setups fit perfectly for the Merc with the Mouth. But hey, I totally understand that it all matters on execution and seeing how they do it differently. After all, just because one movie has done it before, doesn't mean he has the opportunity to do it differently. But seeing how this all matters on execution, Birds of Prey doesn't really have those qualities to make its creativity even worth a darn. And you know what? I'm surprised that this movie is even called Birds of Prey to begin with, because the actual Birds of Prey in this movie are not all that interesting or developed in any certainable way, or even well written in any manner. They have nothing outside of one personality trait and a backstory, and are completely overshadowed by the main star of the film herself. And this also applies to the villains! Hunter is played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who was the one character I found even remotely interesting, and is probably the best actress in the movie, aside from Margot Robbie, doesn't acquire enough screen time to warrant an effective presence in the story, never mind the fact that she's been given a backstory and a vendetta. In fact, she probably delivers the most laughs out of this entire movie, more so than Harley Quinn which is saying something. Black Canary and Renee Montoya have nothing going for them story-wise aside from being involved in environments in which men are cruel and treat them poorly. And Cassandra Cain is nothing more than a plot device and has no characteristics aside from being snarky and rude to other people and is devoid of any likability. And while Ian McGregor is having the time of his life in the role of Black Mask, Black Mask as a character is a one-dimensional misogynist. There's nothing about this man that makes him even a likable villain throughout his grudges, his motivations, his tactics, and even his ideologies that you can easily get behind, but not in a film like this. There is a scene where he torments a woman in front of the entire public, and it's not even funny how he does it. In actuality, it's actually pretty cartoonish and quite despicable, but not in a good way. Why can't they just make Black Mask an actual villain or an actual character who is very methodical and humorous instead of him being just a straight right up symbol for how men are terrible and so on and so forth. And Victor Zass, who we've known from the original source material, is a very psychotic murderer who slits his skin every time he kills a victim just so he can remember who they are, while also having a very special place for Batman, is played extremely over the top by Chris Messina, who is meant to portray a exaggerated, flamboyant, gay stereotype 
whose only defining feature, aside from being a murderer, is that him and Black Mask are a gay item. I'm not kidding. And finally, the pacing of this movie tends to be a bit uneven. Now, what I've said about the aforementioned editing is true. It's not sporadic and uncontrollable. However, the editing doesn't necessarily handle the story well in any discernible way. Because it heavily relies on flashbacks from certain characters, and it does the exact same tactic as Deadpool did, but at least Deadpool was well paced and you knew exactly where you were before anything else happened after that. In Birds of Prey, however, scenes play out for far too long, introducing characters like the majority of the Birds of Prey, which we don't particularly care about, and even at other moments where flashbacks come into the fray that mostly have to do with Huntress after being absent for basically the majority of the film, that don't flow authentically and natural, and don't make the pace feel fast and within the rhythm of the film. Birds of Prey is the next movie in the DC Cinematic Extended Universe that soars to great heights, and it lands on its feet, but breaks its legs upon impact. And to be perfectly clear, this is not me having an anti-DC bias, and this has nothing to do with the fact that I hated the movie simply because it had women in it, even though I can perfectly name movies and characters that can prove that otherwise. It has everything to do with the fact that Birds of Prey is just a shallow action film that makes me pine for a movie that is being released in June, which is a sequel to an overrated original. But the only thing I can say that makes Birds of Prey even somewhat of a watchable movie is the fact that it tarnishes the everlasting heck out of Suicide Squad, which is always a good thing in my book. Anyway guys, thank you for watching my review of Birds of Prey. If you like this video, please like and comment below what you thought of the film yourself. You'll also find me on media outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, and if you have a phone, possibly find me on Instagram. And as always, if you'd like to see more reviews like this, be sure to subscribe for more. DC, I think your mediocrity is showing a little bit. Just saying. My name is Luke Newcomb. And you, my friends, have been blown away.